Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and this is my video series on Practical JavaScript, where I walk you through the algorithm challenges at FreeCodeCamp.com. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make Pig Latin in JavaScript. And um, you, you know, if you were ever a kid, you, know, you probably know how Pig Latin works. You take a you take a letter, you move it to the end of a word, and you add a to it, and it kind of sounds like a foreign language. Uh, so Let's take a look at the, the exact instructions and some of the examples so we know, you know what to do. Um, we're going to translate the provided string into Pig Latin. So this is uh, the argument. It takes one argument, and we're going to take the string, make it Pig Latin. So we're going to return a string. And uh, there's a Wikipedia page linked on the instructions. Uh, but Pig Latin takes the first consonant or consonant cluster. So uh, a cluster is basically, you know, two or more consonants. Um, and most words in English, I'm trying to think here, uh, I, th I think nearly all words in English, uh, they can have up to three consonants uh, in, the, in the initial place to make a consonant cluster. I don't think it's possible to have four consonants at the beginning of a word in English. I might be wrong, um, but anyway. Uh, in Pig Latin, it takes the first consonant or consonant cluster of an English word and moves it to the end of the word and adds the suffix a, a-y. Uh, but if a word begins with a vowel, uh, you just add way to the end of the word and you don't have to move um, the vowel to the end. Uh, okay, and then here are some helpful links. It's uh, definitely... Um, you know, suggesting that we uh, use array index of and push and join a few other methods here. Uh, I use some of these. Uh, I, I certainly don't use all of them. Um, let's look at the uh, examples uh, so you can get a better idea of how this works. So we have this string California. Okay, C is a consonant, so we move it to the end of a string and add a y, so it becomes California K. All right, and it sounds like some weird foreign language there. Uh, same thing with paragraphs. All right, P is the uh, consonant uh, at the beginning of the word. We move it to the end, we add A, so it becomes paragraphs pay. Um, glove has a consonant cluster, so G, L, those are both uh, consonants. And then O, of course, is a vowel. So we're going to move the cluster consonants to the end and add A, so it becomes of glay. Algorithm, however, begins with a uh, vowel, and we don't have to move this vowel to the end. We just add way to the end of the word. It becomes algorithm way. Uh, same thing with eight. Uh, begins with a vowel, so we just add way to the end of it. Okay, so with that in mind, you got enough examples, and if you need to read up on it, just go to the Wikipedia page. Um, I've got my new JavaScript file set up. Uh, it's number six, piglatin.js, and I already embedded that in the HTML file on line 11, as we usually do. So uh, enough talking, let's get to work. Um, so I, I want to create um, an array of all the vowels that we have in here um, in English, not including Y, because sometimes Y is a vowel, I know. Um, but I'm just going to create an array A, E, I, O, and U. Oops, put that in a string, okay. And then I'm going to create another um, variable called result. And I'm just going to uh, take the argument string, str, and then just split that, okay. And uh, you, might have noticed that I did something different with the uh, variables. Uh, normally we start like a variable with the uh, var keyword, um, but if you have like uh, several variables that you want to declare, um, you can actually just separate it with a comma and then, um, and then go to the next line. As long as the last uh, variable that you declare ends with a semicolon, that's totally okay. So instead of having var vowels and var result, I could just use one keyword var separate with the comma, and then make sure to end the last one with a semicolon. Um, it uh, looks a little bit cleaner, 
And, um, and for reasons that I don't want to explain right now, it's uh, actually better for uh, performance and memory if you uh, reduce the number of our keywords. Uh, so keep that in your back pocket. Uh, but for these, you know, simple, or I shouldn't say simple, but for these relatively, you know, small algorithm challenges that we do for a free code camp, it's not really going to affect your performance if you use a bunch of our keywords or not. So, yeah, uh, whatever. Uh, it might come up in an interview one day. So, so anyway, all right, I've declared the variables uh, that I wanted. And so now I just want to uh, begin uh, with a simple if. So, if vowels, and remember that's our array of vowel uh, letters, if vowels includes, okay, that's a new array method, includes, so str zero. All right, so uh, str index zero, that would be the first letter of the string. And, you know, I could say that, or I could also say char at, zero. In fact, uh, let's go ahead and do that uh, just, to, just to make it clear that we're dealing with a string and not an array. Uh, but anyway, uh, basically it takes the first letter and it's asking, um, is it included in this array? Okay, does, does, uh, does the vowels array include the letter, the first letter from the string? All right, and the first letter is C and it is uh, not included in the vowels array, so it's going to return false. Um, if it were, if it, if it were a vowel, it would return true, but it's not. It is a um, it is a, a consonant. It's not included in that vowels array. Um, but anyway, if it were a vowel, it would be really simple. We would just say str plus equals way. And that should work. And let me just use um, a very simple example like that eight that we had there. I'm going to save it. I'm going to go to my example.html file in Chrome, open the developer tools, open the JavaScript console. All right, clear that out and refresh the page. And there you have it, eight way. So uh, the first letter was a vowel and it returned true because we're using this includes array method. Um, the, the, the character E is included in this array, so it returns true. And we just return the string and we add way to the end of it. So pretty simple, uh, relatively simple. All right, now if the first letter is not a vowel, then we know that we need to take that consonant or that consonant cluster, move it to the end, and then, um, and then add a Y to it. So let's go ahead and take care of that code. So there's no other conditions that we need to test for. So we just need an else, we don't need an else if. And I wanna create a loop because I don't know if the word uh, has you know, one consonant or a consonant cluster. So we need to uh, check if it has a consonant cluster. I'm gonna use a simple for loop to do that. So for, all right, bar i is equal to zero. All right, and we're just going to iterate until the um, length uh, of the strings, so str of length i plus plus. You've seen this kind of pattern for for loops many times before, so it should be becoming uh, like second nature, nature to you. All right, so if all right, and I'm going to do the same thing that I did earlier. If vowels includes str, and I can I can use bracket notation like this, or I can use the the char at. Okay, and I'll just say I'll just say this. I'll use bracket notation. Mm -hmm. And so remember that exclamation point, it, it makes a true into a false and a false into a true. So uh, in other words, if, if the current, um, if the current uh, I guess you could say that if the current letter 
uh, in the iteration of this loop. If it is not a vowel, in other words, if it is not included in this vowels array, then we want to execute this code. Because remember, uh, if we're testing for consonants and we did this, it's going to return false. But I'm testing for consonants, um, so I'm going to put the exclamation point right there. And, and it converts a false into a true and a true into a false, in other words. So if that's the case, okay, all right, result dot push. Okay, we're going to use the results array. Results that push and result shift. Okay. So um, it just it just in case you've forgotten, shift is is like pop. So pop removes the last item of an array and returns that. Shift removes the first item of an array and returns that. So uh, I'm just putting the um, the array method directly inside of here. So we're going to pop or we're going to shift the array, remove the uh, first item at the beginning, return that, and it's already inside this push method. So we're literally just taking the first item uh, from the array, removing it from its first position, and then moving it to the end of the array. And so everything just kind of shifts up uh, forward like that. Okay, so as long as um, as long as it is going to um, it, as long as it's going to be a um, a consonant, we're going to do that. We're going to shift the um, that current letter. We're going to move it over and then uh, it, add it to the array. Else, if we have finally reached a, a vowel after shifting and and pushing uh, consonants to the end. Of the um, of the word, then we're going to add result or result push a, and then we're just going to return that result dot join to make it a string again. And uh, remember, you know, return. Um, you know, executes the, you know, it, it will terminate the program. So it, as soon as the uh, loop encounters uh, this return statement, it, it's going to just stop the loop and return um, the, the result as a string because we got result uh, join. All right, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to try uh, California because that's the best, best place in the world. Save that. Oops, there I am. Return it. Okay, and there we go. We got California K. I'm going to go back into my code. Just copy and paste this. Let's just test it to make sure that it works at the Free Code Camp website. Run the test. And I got to have more cowbell. That is today's success message. So um, this, this was my quick and dirty solution. Um, and, and I wanted to show you the includes array method. Um, I can't remember if I've shown that to you uh, already uh, or not, but, but there it is again. Um, it, I like this. It's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's easy to follow along uh, this algorithm, relatively easy. Um, it could probably be refactored to be more elegant um, and, you know, probably fewer lines. Um, um, so, um, you know, that's kind of up to you. I didn't use you know, all of the suggested um, methods that Free Code Camp offered, uh, but remember in the intermediate section, um, the, the, the number of solutions to these problems are pretty much infinite. Um, so that's my solution. And uh, well, I'd be curious to see what you could come up with. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for improvement, I would love to hear from you. Uh, please do so at the comments below, and I promise that I will uh, get back in touch with you. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Boop.